Today is the 13th of June 2022. My name is David Hickson and in today's market update we're going to be taking a look at the S&P 500 and some ES futures prices and we are also going to be taking a look at some spreadsheets and getting back to the basics to understand why price interacts in the way that it does with the FLD. Before we take a look at the markets I must ask you to please make sure that you have read and understood these disclaimers. So let's start off by taking a look at the analysis that we have been speaking about for weeks and months in these market update videos. This is the analysis with the 18-month cycle trough over here at the beginning of October, which I have discussed in previous videos. So if this is the first time you're seeing this analysis, I would encourage you to go back and take a look at previous market update videos to make sure that you understand what it is that we're speaking about here. Of course, we have the very prominent trough in March of 2020 phased as a trough of either 54-month magnitude or possibly 9-year magnitude but uh, more likely 54 months. And recently, of course, the markets have been turning bearish. In fact, if you take a look at the videos I've been recording over the past few months, you will notice that I have been speaking about the fact that the markets have been turning bearish and in particular comparing the S&P 500 to the NASDAQ and discussing various reasons why these markets might be turning bearish. So what has been happening recently? Well, last week the markets turned nastily bearish and price failed to find support at the level of the 20-day FLD. We're going to be taking a look at that in more detail in today's video. I've been discussing over the past week or two the fact that this trough over here, I think that was in the third week of May, was a trough of at least 80-day magnitude or possibly 40-week magnitude. In last week's market update video, I discussed a way in which we can track the mood of the market by studying the way in which price interacts with the FLD. So we're going to take a look at that in a moment. This analysis presents the possibility that a 40-week cycle trough formed towards the end of May. And of course, the bounce that we saw out of that trough, whether it was 40-week magnitude or 80-day magnitude, was a fairly disappointing one, as you can see. In fact, perhaps we should zoom in here. Here you can see that the bounce out of that trough was of only about one week in duration and then price formed a bit of a triangular wedge and of course it has dropped out of that wedge in a rather menacing fashion at the end of last week. And in overnight trading, I'm recording this video before the US markets open, you can see that price has dropped even further down. I've been speaking about the bearishness in this market for some time and a few weeks ago I suggested that you fasten your seatbelts and prepare yourself for a rough ride because indeed that bearishness has been constantly building and it was not really very much of a surprise that the bounce out of this trough was not a very impressive one. But now what is happening here? Let's first of all consider the magnitude of this trough. It is natural for somebody who is new to Hearst Cycles to assume that because the markets are moving lower down, that means that the 40-week or 80-day cycle trough that we had identified only three weeks prior to this move down should be moved to the right. Now that is possible, but it is not necessarily the case. In a bearish market, when the market is moving downwards, identifying troughs can be fairly tricky, as I've mentioned before. I mentioned in last week's video that there have not been an average number of days since the 18-month cycle trough at the beginning of October for a 40-week cycle. There you can see the bar count. There have been, as of today, only 255 days. Now the average length of a 40-week cycle is 270 two days and so we might have another three weeks to go before the 40-week cycle trough actually does form. However, as I've mentioned before, more important than the actual wavelengths that we are looking at is the way that the complex puzzle of the analysis breaks down. What I mean by that is the identification of the shorter cycles. So you can see here we have a 20-week cycle trough over there, an 80-day cycle trough over there, a fairly questionable 40 40-day cycle trough there and the way in which those shorter cycles are phased implies that this trough over here must be the 40-week cycle trough. 
So is it possible that price has bounced out of a 40-week cycle trough for a total duration of only just over one week? Yes, it is absolutely possible. That's why we're going to be taking a look at some spreadsheets to understand what happens when a market is bullish or when a market is bearish, particularly in terms of understanding the way in which price interacts with the FLD. Now you will notice that I have influenced this analysis. That's what these pin symbols mean at the foot of the chart. I have influenced the analysis and it is quite possible that my influence has had a negative effect on the analysis. That is why I speak about the trough that formed in May as being between 80 day magnitude and 40 week magnitude. Let's take a look at the other analysis which I have not influenced to quite such a great degree and that analysis shows us an 80 day cycle trough formed in the middle of May. Here is that analysis and it's one that we were discussing in these market update videos. You can see that I have influenced the position of the 20 week cycle trough under this low in the first week of March. I discussed that in previous videos so I won't discuss it again but you can see that the trough that formed in May is of 80 day magnitude according to this analysis which means that we are expecting price to move down into this 40 week cycle trough which is expected towards the end of July or in early August. In my opinion, the trough that formed in the middle of May was of at least 80 day magnitude and it could have been the 40 week cycle trough that we witnessed. As mentioned, identifying troughs in a falling market is a fairly difficult thing to do, just as identifying peaks in a rising market is a difficult thing to do. And that is why I like to watch the way in which price interacts with an FLD and you can use any FLD for this process, but I track the way in which price interacts with that FLD to understand what the market is telling us. So let's take a look in some more detail at what happened with the 20 day FLD last week. Here is that 20 day FLD with the analysis that has the 80 day cycle trough here in the middle of May. Now you will know that I track a sequence of interactions between price and the FLD and this was an A category interaction which is the first interaction that occurs following a trough of at least 80 day magnitude when looking at the 20 day FLD. And as mentioned you can look at pretty much any FLD so we could be tracking intraday charts and watching the 5 hour cycle FLD or a 5 day cycle FLD, 10 day and so forth. Price then reached up and achieved its target as a result of crossing that FLD. What happened next was critical and I discussed it in last week's update video. At the time that the 20 day cycle trough forms, we expect price to find support at the level of the FLD. You can see that on Monday price was above the FLD, on Tuesday it came down and apparently found support but on Wednesday it dropped down below it although that price bar straddled the FLD, in other words the high was above the FLD and the low was below the FLD. But on Thursday, as you can see, support at the level of the FLD was completely broken and price dropped sharply downwards. So how do we use the interaction between price and the FLD to track what is happening in the markets? It's very simple. On the assumption that this was a trough of 80 day magnitude, we watch as price crosses above the level of the FLD. That is, as mentioned, the A category interaction. It's a fairly difficult interaction to trade because you are sometimes stopped into that trade when price doesn't cross above it but in fact finds resistance at the level of the FLD as I discussed in previous market updates. We had three examples of the FLD providing resistance to price. What is more useful from a trading perspective in my opinion is to watch how price finds support or fails to find support at the level of the FLD which is the next interaction. The B category interaction is where price comes down to the level of the FLD and the C category interaction is where we expect it to bounce upwards and away from the FLD. That in my opinion is a better opportunity for a trade. And if this kind of identification of trading opportunities on the basis of the 20 day FLD is too slow for you, then of course you could work with a much shorter cycle, such as, as mentioned, the 5 hour cycle FLD. 
But when price failed to find support at the level of that FLD, that immediately alerted us to the fact that this market does not have sufficient bullishness in it. And why is that? It is always because of the pressure of the longer cycles. As mentioned, it is possible that this 80-day cycle trough, or indeed the 40-week cycle trough, still lies ahead of us and that price is moving down into that trough and will then bounce out of it. However, in my opinion, it is more likely that this trough has indeed formed and that what we are witnessing is the market turning nastily bearish despite the fact that this trough has formed, which means that the longer cycles are pressing downwards, and that gives us a very bearish message. As a matter of interest, if you had been a very aggressive trader, there are some traders that enter a trade when price touches the FLD. If that was the case, then you would usually set a very tight stop. And so when you have a bar that has a low that is higher than the low of the previous bar, and it is straddling the FLD, your stop could have been placed here. But now let's look at the chart of the ES futures price that I showed a few weeks ago, which uses the initial cyclic model as the basis for the analysis. You might remember this chart. The idea behind the initial cyclic model is that Sentient Trader gives greater emphasis to the results of the spectral analysis that is performed at the beginning of the analysis process. The results of this analysis were interesting but very bearish as I pointed out at the time. First of all, we have an 18-month cycle trough that formed in June or possibly in July of last year. The fact that the market has turned bearish is not surprising in the context of this analysis because of the fact that we have the next 18-month cycle low looming ahead of us. And if we take a look at the composite model line that is derived from this analysis, you can see the path of the price action, which is indeed very bearish with price moving down into this 18-month cycle low. But now what about the fact that there are fairly big magnitude cycle troughs that need to form on the way down to this 18-month cycle low? Surely we should get some bullish action as price bounces out of those troughs. If we zoom in and rescale this a little bit, you can see that the composite model line shows what is expected on the basis of the cycle analysis. Here is the nest of lows for the 20-week cycle trough according to this analysis and you can see that the composite model line shows a fairly muted bounce up from that cycle trough followed by a move down. Again we will get some small bounces up but the general message is definitely that price is going to keep moving down into that 18-month cycle low. So how do we track our interactions with the FLD in such a bearish market, if indeed this market does turn out to be moving down into the next 18-month cycle trough? I thought it would be interesting to go back to basics in terms of how I discovered the interaction between price and the FLD and discuss those interactions under various market conditions by taking a look at an idealized spreadsheet. So here is a chart in the Excel spreadsheet that will look very familiar to you if you have studied the FLD trading strategy course because it explains why price interacts with the FLD. This blue line is price action which is of course idealized and it is very simply composed by these three cycles that are plotted very faintly at the foot of the chart. This cycle over here is the equivalent of an 80-day cycle if the FLD, which is this dashed line over here, is the FLD based on the 20-day cycle. So here is the 80-day cycle FLD. I can draw over it if case you can't see it very clearly and this cycle over here a little clearer is the 40 day cycle and this cycle the shortest cycle that is being composed into this price action is the 20 day cycle you will notice that the cycles obey Hurst's principles in other words the troughs are synchronized where possible this is a trough of the 20 day cycle and also the 40 day cycle here is a trough of the 20-day cycle, which of course cannot be a trough of the 40-day cycle because the 40-day cycle, as you can see, is experiencing a peak at that time. At the left-hand edge of the chart are the troughs of the 80-day, 40-day and 20-day cycles here on the left-hand edge and the same thing 
here on the right hand edge of the chart. You will also notice that the principle of proportionality has been applied to this chart. That tells us that the amplitude, and let me just clear all the markings on this chart, the amplitude of the cycle, which is measured vertically, of course, on the y-axis, the amplitude of the 80-day cycle is exactly double the amplitude of the 40-day cycle, which itself is exactly double the amplitude of the 20-day cycle. So what does this tell us about the FLD? Well, if price was composed in an entirely idealized world of only these three cycles, then this blue line would be the result of the influence of those three cycles. This dashed purple line is the FLD based on the shortest of these cycles. It is colored purple as the 20-day cycle is colored purple on our charts. And so for the sake of illustration, we could call this the 20-day cycle FLD. Now you will notice that price crosses down below that FLD over there. It crosses above it over here and it crosses down below it over here and of course at the start of the next cycle it crosses above it over there. So we have only four interactions and yet we identify a sequence of eight interactions. Why is that? Because in my experience the amplitude of the cycles is the least reliable of all of Hurst's principles. The principle of proportionality is the least reliable of his principles. And in my experience, the amplitude of cycles when they have double the wavelength is very often not, in fact, double. In other words, um, an 80-day cycle will often not have double the amplitude of the 40-day cycle. I can adjust this spreadsheet to show you a more realistic, in my experience, interpretation of the relationship between the wavelength and the amplitude of the cycles. I've adjusted the spreadsheet to assume that the ratio between the amplitude and the wavelength of the various cycles is in fact only 1.2. In other words, the 80-day cycle has 1.2 times the amplitude of the 40-day cycle and the 40-day cycle has 1.2 times the amplitude of the 20-day cycle. In my experience, this is a more accurate representation of what actually happens in the markets. But it's an interesting exercise, and you should certainly perform the exercise for yourself to see how this works. So here are the interactions that occur between price and the FLD. This is our A category interaction, where price crosses above the 20-day FLD following a trough of at least 80-day magnitude. At about the time that the 20-day cycle trough forms in the market, and you'll notice a little bit of time translation over here, at about that time, price comes down and finds support at the level of the 20-day FLD. This is what we were looking for last week, but of course it failed, and we're going to speak in a moment about why it failed. But that is our B category interaction. Our C category interaction is where price pulls up and away from the FLD again. Here is our D category interaction where price crosses down below the FLD on its way down to the 40-day cycle trough. Here is our E category interaction as price crosses back above the FLD, bouncing out of the 40-day cycle trough. Here is our F category interaction, as price crosses down below the FLD on its way down to the 80-day cycle trough that will end the sequence. The G and H category interactions are a little bit like the mirror image of the B and C category interactions, because price comes up to the FLD and finds resistance at the level of the FLD, and then drops down away from from the FLD again in the H category interaction. I speak about these interactions all the time. I've been trading these interactions for years. And in fact, I didn't discover the interactions through playing with spreadsheets. I discovered the interactions through trading the markets because I noticed that some FLD crosses were what I called golden crosses. Price crossed above the FLD or below the FLD and achieved its targets. However, there were other crosses, leaden crosses, where price failed to cross the FLD and instead found support or resistance at the level of that FLD. It was only later that I came to the spreadsheet and actually figured out why it was that it did this. But here is the interesting point and the point that I wish to make. This is an example of these three cycles creating a simple price movement and you can see that there is no underlying trend or no influence from longer cycles. 
underlying trend is simply the combined effect of all longer cycles, according to the way that Hearst originally defined it. And in all market situations, you have some kind of underlying trend. So what happens when you have a very bullish underlying trend? For instance, let's take a look. Here are exactly the same three cycles, but we have an underlying trend which is bullish. So here is the 80-day cycle trough at the left-hand edge and the next 80-day cycle trough at the right-hand edge. This is the 40-day cycle trough and here is the 20-day cycle trough. Let's look at the way in which price interacts with the FLD. You can see we get a good impressive cross above the FLD. That's our A category interaction. Our B and C category interactions, price actually fails to even reach the FLD, which is something we often see in a bullish market. The D category interaction, price comes down below the FLD, but actually probably fails to reach its target, so its target would have been a little bit lower. Then the E category interaction gives us a good bullish interaction as price crosses up above the FLD. But now this is where things get interesting because the F category interaction that should give us a good short trading opportunity fails to do so. And here is the G and then the H category interactions where price, you will remember, normally finds resistance at the level of the FLD. But under bullish market conditions, these interactions are not very reliable. In other words, price crossed above the FLD and certainly did not find resistance at the level of the FLD. We can adjust the parameters and make this an even more bullish market. This is what happens to price interacting with the FLD when we have a very bullish market. I'll let you pause the video and you can go back and go through the sequence of interactions for yourself because at the moment we are certainly more interested in the reverse case where we have a bearish market. So let's take a look at a bearish market and the sequence of interactions. Here is the sequence of interactions in a fairly bearish market. Again, we have our 80-day cycle trough here at the left-hand edge of the chart and also at the right-hand edge of the chart. You will notice as a matter of interest the time translation has actually pushed this trough slightly off the edge of our chart. But here are the interactions. Here is our A category interaction where price crosses above the level of the FLD and does reach its target. It doesn't exceed it by very much as you can see, but it does reach it. Here is the B and then the C category interaction where instead of price finding support at the level of the FLD, it actually slips slightly below it, but not by very much. Here is the D category interaction, which gives us a good short trading opportunity. Here is the E category interaction, which is a disappointing long trade, as you can see, because price does not reach its target. Here is the F category interaction, which gives us an excellent short trading opportunity. Where are the G and H category interactions? Here they are. They are not a matter of price finding resistance at the level of the FLD. They are simply a matter of price reaching slightly towards the FLD. That is what happens in a bearish market. Let's make this even more extreme and assume that this is a very bearish market. And let's see what happens. And here we have an example with a very bearish market. Again, we have our 80-day cycle trough at the beginning of the chart and our next 80-day cycle trough at the end of the chart. Here is our A category interaction, which reaches up and just about achieves its target. Here is the B category interaction. You can see that price, in fact, fails to find support at the level of the FLD, but drops below it. The C category interaction is not a matter of price rising up and tearing away from the FLD, but is in fact a matter of price coming up and finding resistance at the level of the FLD. You can see how we have the same sequence of interactions, but they are all twisted to the downside. Here is the D category interaction as price drops away from the FLD, moves down towards the 40-day cycle trough. Now, it is my opinion that that is what is happening now. I think that we witnessed a very poor example of support at the level of the FLD, which is what we would expect in a bearish market. The C category interaction was what we witnessed last week as price tried to pull above the FLD but failed. And the D category interaction was when it gave up all hope and came down towards the 40-day cycle trough. 
Next, we would expect the E category interaction, which is usually an example where price will cross above the FLD and rise up to its target. You can see that under bearish market conditions, price absolutely fails to reach its target. And in fact, finding resistance at the level of the FLD is more likely. The F category interaction is where price drops down and away from the FLD. Here are our G and H category interactions, which are hardly a blip on the downwards move into the final 80 day cycle trough. And so let's wrap up this video and discuss what we are expecting to happen now. Here is the 80 day cycle trough at the left. Here is the nest of lows for the next 80 day cycle trough. We are looking at the analysis here where the recent trough's magnitude was of only 80 days. If that was a 40 week cycle trough, then the situation would be even more bearish. I will let you work out why for yourselves. But here is the sequence of interactions. Here is our A category interaction. The B category interaction, I believe, occurred last week. The C category interaction, as I mentioned, I think was this very brief move upwards, which means that we have already experienced the D category interaction and are already on our way down to the 40 day cycle trough. If you are not feeling quite as bearish as I am, then you might argue that price will still form the 20 day cycle trough and we are going to witness a bit of a bounce out of that 20 day cycle trough. However, in a bearish market, I think that it is probably best to concentrate on the, the overall move, which is, of course, that after the 40 day cycle trough has formed, we're going to get a little bit of a cross up above the FLD, perhaps, and then price is going to continue moving down into the next 80 day cycle trough in late July or early August. Now, if imagining this sequence of interactions is a little complicated, the composite model line provides us with a very interesting way of visualizing the analysis as it is doing here. And so you can see we might be looking at a bounce fairly soon, followed by a move down, another bounce out of the 40 day cycle trough in early July, and then a final move down over here. I do hope that you found this market update useful and interesting. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below the video. I look forward to hearing from you.